Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you all had a good Christmas and I wish all of you and your family and whoever a uh, happy new year and wish you just you know, all the best for 2023. So it's been a long time since I've done another uh, a video and I've been getting comments, when are you doing another one? When are you doing another podcast? And so on and so forth. And you know, before I was kind of putting myself under pressure to do these things, but all these things are is just a hobby. I like doing them. I like doing them. I've no time constraints on when I'm going to do one. Um, I've no schedule or whatever. So they're going to be done when they're done. One of the questions I did ask, did get asked before Christmas is what gear I use. We've done a video with Ben. Ben has shown you, <coughs> excuse me, Ben has shown you a video of his stuff so I decided today is the day um I wasn't out deer stalking this morning um just just you know just took a break so I'm going to show you a video and I'm going to show you what I bring with me what I think are the essentials for deer stalking on a day-to-day -day basis so first things first the rifle as you can see no mag, no bullets, all safe. Sacco 85 carbon light, chambered in 30 yard six. Fantastic rifle, very, very good, very accurate, very light, very light. I'm not too sure what exactly the weight is of it, um, but all in all, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it now. I wasn't at the start. I actually wasn't happy with the, the, probably the rifle before Christmas. I just wasn't having much success with it. And that wasn't the rifle's fault, that was my fault. Before Christmas I was kind of, I know I'm kind of getting off the subject here now, but before Christmas I was contemplating on changing the thing. And then I said to myself, what is the point of me changing this? I've spent God knows how many years chopping and changing rifles and calibers. And I said to myself, do you know what? Enough is enough. I'm going to stick with this and I'm going to get good at it. Get good with it. Get confident with it. I'm confident with it now as it is. But I just want to be a bit more confident in general. And that, that means more practice. That means more bullets downrange or whatever. We can always get into that rut of always wanting to chop and change. Any rifle, any rifle that is deer legal in your country is going to do the job. It just takes practice and it just takes an awful lot of rounds to get confident with it. Yeah, so I'm sticking with the 30 odd 6. 30 odd 6 is been around over, I, is it over 100 years? And it'll be around for 100 more. It'll be a, a, around a lot, far, a lot longer than I will be. And that's the reason why I'm going to stick with 30 odd 6. Smooth action on the Sacco. Very smooth. I think it's four, three lugs. Could be more. No, it's three lugs. Three lugs. I've adjusted the, the trigger it, myself. Didn't bring it into a, a, a gun shop. It's just a matter of Allen key in here, twisting it till it's good. You can look up videos on YouTube how to do that. Unle I wouldn't recommend, unless you're confident in doing stuff like that, I wouldn't recommend doing them. Go to a gunsmith. If you're not confident, I'm not responsible for your fuck ups. <laughs> the trigger, nice and crisp. You know, I reckon it's probably two pounds. Yeah, very crisp. Two pounds, two pound trigger. Safety as well, normal safety. Push forward to um, shoot back for safe but they also have an, an inbuilt I don't know if you can see it but this 
this um, little button here, this allows you to operate the bolt without taking it off of safety. So if you needed to take out a round, or if a client had it, and the uni and the client needed to take out the round without you know going near anything or whatever, that's a very handy feature to have. And as you can see, safe. Five round magazine, one in the chamber, uh, 22, 23 inch fluted barrel, standard um, M14 by one, muzzle tread on it. I don't actually have the moderator. Moderator I have on this is a Jet-Z Compact. Now, nothing against Jet-Z, but they don't seem to minimize the muzzle flip on this rifle as, as much as I wanted. Um, muzzle flip for me is a no-no. Um, I like to see where the round hits. I like to see the reaction on the animal. There's nothing as worse as, as shooting or firing at an animal and hearing the impact, but not being able to see what reaction the animal has to the round. And you don't know whether that animal has been hit further back in the liver, um, or if you've you know, grazed the brisket or whatever. So that's the reason why I don't like the Jet Z Compact. So I'm going to trade, I'm not gonna trade it in, I'm gonna buy a, possibly a house skin or whatever with a couple more baffles and the more baffles you have the less flip it's going the less muzzle flip you're going to get um the scope i have on uh srofsky z6i 2.5 by 15 by 44 with the ballistic turrets this ballistic turret um it's ideal it's zeroed at 100 meters and you can I have it adjusted in a way that if I go to green, it's adjusted for 200. Uh, go to yellow, it's adjusted for 250. And I go to red, it's adjusted to 300 meters. Now, 300 meter shot, wouldn't recommend anybody shooting a deer at 300 meters, um, unless you're absolutely so uh, confident um, and skilled and you're capable, your capabilities have to be spot on um, to be shooting deer at that range. Whatever you do, um, at, yeah, whatever you do with your, with your deer or what you're shooting is your own business. I'm just giving my opinions on it, each to their own. It's none of my business and what you do. So I'm just giving you a small bit of advice. Um, yeah, so that's the rifle. That is my rifle. Um, again, I was going to change it before Christmas. Now I'm not going to do it. I'm going to spend the um, couple of weekends, couple of days, just really, really, really fine tuning this. And we'll see how we go from there. The um, What's it called? Cheat pad. Cheat pad. Uh, just, uh, I don't know where I got it, um, but it's, it's important to have the rifle fitting you in all ways. Your cheek weld, I hope you can see this, my cheek weld on this. When I put my cheek down on this and I'm comfortable, I can see a full sight picture through through the scope. And most importantly, when I close my eyes and open it back up, I still have that sight picture there. So that's when you know the rifle is fitting you very, very well. So that is my rifle. Next thing I have is my binoculars. Binocular case, ridgeline binocular case, good, good quality, good enough. Um, side pockets, you're able to put, we'll come back to this little thing in a second. Side pockets, able to put your bipod on it, your, your whatever you want to throw into it, uh, gloves, 
um, maybe a, a Swiss Army knife or something. Um, pocket on the back, you can throw your mobile phone in, that's where I put my mobile phone in or my keys. Um, another side pocket as well. On it I just have a, a lens cloth, you know, they're a couple of quid. Once it gets a bit wet, or if you're stalking in um, rough weather, use this to take some of the excess um, uh, water off the lens. It's important to keep them clean. And my binoculars are Leica Geovid HDB. Um, this is the ballistic version of it. I've had these a long time. I've had these a long time. They're absolutely exceptional. They really are good. Um, range out to, I think, I think these range out to 2,000 meters or 2,500 meters. Not particularly sure. I have no need or want to range an animal at that distance. I will never be shooting an animal at that distance. So, yeah, that's just my opinion. One button on, two buttons actually. Button to the closest to the inside. You press that, a box will appear on the screen and then you press it again and that will give you your, your distance. I'm not going into the, all the details with the, uh, with the, uh, the, the Leica's, but fantastic, fa fantastic piece of kit, fantastic quality as well, and fantastic after service. Um, these come with, I have them off, they come with these, and this is the one design fault that I would find with the, the, these, these uh, Leica's. I think they have a, a new one out now, they're after rectifying that. But the lens caps, the lens covers, they're just a small uh, rubber ring that goes around here and the caps fold back up in, onto the, the uh, ocular part. But if they get brushed off, like if I'm taking them out of the, taking them out of the, the bino pad, they can get lost, they can fall off, and I've had to sellotape them or uh, cable tie them to this. Um, that's the one thing that I don't like. But back to their customer service, I was able to contact them, say I'm after, Told them I'm after losing them. Would he be able to send me out a pair, a, a set? And they do. They have often sent me out like four, four spares. Also, around the laser magnification, or sorry, the laser emitter here. This plastic shroud that fell off. I asked them for replacement, and they and they sent them back. So, there. It's just once you pay a lot of money for something, you expect the after service to be exceptional and Leica are exceptional. So, they are my binoculars. Again, magnetic here, just easily just, and sometimes when I'm walking along, myself and Benny, you'll see us on, on, their, on my videos, we'll walk around with the, that like, the cover just folded over like that, so you can like easily take them in and out, you know? So that's good. Another thing, and it's probably the best, best 10 quid. Now, Ben actually gave me a, a gift of these, but they're, I think they're only 10, 10 or 15 quid. The Primos wind checker. You can get other wind checkers around the place. It doesn't matter what one they are. They all do the same job. And I think you can see that, see the, the dust coming up. That's very important. So obviously it's a wind checker. But that allows you, especially when you're stalking in, in woodland. And when you're in woodland and you're stalking in it, the wind tends to be swirling all around the place, swirling around the trees or whatever. And you need to be able to detect the direction of the wind to plan your stalk. There's no point in stalking with the wind in your back going towards the direction you're going. Because as we know, deer have a very, very acute sense of smell. And if they smell you, that's it, they're gone. If they see you, they might necessarily budge, but if they smell you, that's it, game over. Wind checker, Primos wind checker, ideal, great piece of kit. Now, this little bag here, fanny pack, seven litre. 
khaki green from Decathlon. Ben bought me this. Absolute best piece of kit ever bought. I think they're only 20 quid, 20 euro. But is by far the best, one of the best pieces of kit I have ever used for deer stalking. Hands down, bar none. It's just so, so, so simple. We have two big pockets in the middle, two smaller ones on either side. We have, I think they're called carabiner or webbing, carabiner clips or, or webbing here. So you can attach, I don't know, a carabiner or anything you want to it. I, there's probably endless uh, applications for this. Just I can't think of, of the, off the top of my head what it is. But I wear it like this. Just, I hope you can see me. Just wear it around face to the back. It's out of your way. You don't have a bag on. You can put your rifle over your shoulder can continue on. Ideal, absolutely ideal. 20 quid decathlon, ideal. So let's see what's inside it. Gloves. Gloves, 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 gloves. You can never have enough of them. Lads will, especially over here, lads will laugh at you for wearing gloves. Let them fucking laugh. If a deer is carrying a disease, they're animals, they're like us, we can pick up infections in the blood or skin or whatever. This is basically the only thing that's separating you from the animal's disease. So you need to be wearing them. Don't know who that is, I heard something. Anyway, it's grand. You need to be wearing them. Gloves. Deer drag, again from the Catalan. Not 100% sure how much they are. Probably 15, 20 euro again. Just makes your life an awful lot more easier extracting deer instead of grabbing around the antlers or grabbing them around the, the legs or whatever. Again, it separates you from the deer. And you don't really want to be handling an animal if it's the tick burden on it is like through the roof. So it acts as a form of protection as well from, from you and the deer. So like 15 quid, absolutely ideal. Also what I have is just a simple, simple S hook. I wanted to do a, a suspended grolic if I had time to do a suspended grolic. Um, there's there's an, another one, there was meant to be another one in there, but can't find it. Um, simple suspended grolic, pop it in there, up onto the tree, there you go. If your Jeep is close by and you have the ability to do a suspended grolic, I'd recommend carrying a few of them. They're only a couple of quid as well. Now. Simple bushcraft saw, again, weighs very little, probably 40, 50 quid now. Um, I've ha I have a few of these myself. Um, if you needed to like cut down trees, trees that are in the way of your high seat or something, ideal. I've used these on um, cutting the ribcage open on, on bigger deer, bigger seeker. Ideal, it'll go through it like butter. Again, it's a very good thing to have, 30 quid. Now, that pouch is for my light. Lights, LED Lenser H7R2. This is the older model, ideal. Um, focus beam on it, you can, <laughs> you can focus the beam on it, you can adjust the brightness by this little uh, roller switch back here. Um, rechargeable, and it also takes LED, sorry, it also takes four AAA batteries. Batteries I keep in the Jeep. I usually have a couple of spare sets in there as well, in the bag. Um, but like four 
if you're stalking, hill stalking, and the weather changes, you know, coming towards the evening, gets dark very quick, especially this time of year here. A flashlight, a light like this, ideal to have. Keeps your head, keeps your hands free as well. So if you're doing a grolic and it is getting dark, you can easily throw this on. Recommend it as well. Safety as well, guys. Safety. Let's go on to my knife. I'm very proud of this. This is a Barry Stoffel Mangerton knife. I, I hope you can see this. I hope you can see the quality in that. Very proud of this knife. Very proud. I haven't even used it yet. I've used other knives. But this, I'm really looking forward. Really, really looking forward to using this knife. Based down in Kerry, he makes exceptional knives. And like, this knife is just absolutely razor, razor, razor sharp. Razor sharp. Walnut burl with orange and black uh, V10 liners. And we can get bogged down in knives as well. We can get bogged down with knives, buying knives. And, like I'd say, every deer stalker in the country probably has around 10 knives. <laughs> no joke. And I've owned different brands. I've owned Ember Leafs. I still own them. Fal conniven ones. And I don't know what the, the, I don't know what the addiction is like. Well, like you just want new things. Like obviously, we want new things. My suggestion is, is buy once, cry once. Buy once and cry once. Of course, there's cheaper alternatives out there. Nothing wrong with cheaper alternatives. In actual fact, I probably have. I actually do have a Mora knife in there just for spare, and. A sharp knife is always going to do the job. The only the difference between a Mora and let's say a Barry Stoffel knife is that you can is number one is the quality. It's a custom made build. No one else owns this knife, only me. And the difference being is that the quality of steel in this will allow you possibly to do maybe four, four or five deer without having to restrop it. Whereas the Mora Kniven, Mora Knives, once they touch bone, that's it. They're gone they're very hard to, not that they're hard to resharpen, but it's just, just a bit of a hindrance. If you are doing, if you are culling a lot of animals and you need them to be grolicked, you know, obviously we need them to be grolicked, but if you need them, if you need to be doing more than, than one grolic, a, a more a knife, in my opinion, probably won't be the best option. But going back to the Barry Stoffel knives, there's a a little miniature, a little micro bevel on on um, the blade. Now, what does that mean? It means that you might have to reach out to somebody who has. A decent set of whetstones if it does get that bad if it gets bad to resharpen it um it, i'd say you now possibly a strop if you to look after it i don't think you'd have to resharpen it fantastic knife absolutely exceptional unbelievable quality i'm extremely happy to own one one thing I'm leaving out as well, guys, is my shooting sticks. The shooting sticks I use are the Viperflex sticks. They're... I've owned Viperflex from day one. And I have to say, the quality of them is second to none. I've used other, I've other, I've used other um, quad sticks before. 
And I just found that when the rifle goes on the sticks, I just found that there's a small bit of a bounce when you're moving the rifle around. Let's say the deer moves and you need to move the sticks. I've just found that there's a bit of a bounce in them. I didn't really like that, but with the Viperflex sticks, they're absolutely solid, solid. And I've recommended them. I've done an art articles on them before. I've recommended them and I just find them absolutely just the dog's bollocks. So I hope you've liked that little video. Um, like and share, obviously. Um, recommend it to your friends. Give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, subscribe, all that type of stuff. It helps the channel grow. Probably on a, a, a leave a note. Don't get too bogged down in equipment. Don't get too bogged down. Like all this stuff in here is the best of the best. But it has taken me a long time to gather all of these materials, gather all of all of this equipment, and gather all the the, the money to to be able to pay for them. So for any young person starting out in deer stalking or any other hunting application, don't get too bogged down. The second hand market in rifles now is very, very, very good. You'd be able to pick up a second hand setup for less than 1500 quid and you'd be able to shoot deer with it. One thing I would suggest though is don't skimp on don't skimp on optics. Always, always, always spend more on the optics if you can than the rifle. Because it, at the end of and mounts. Because at the end of the day, it's the optics that allow you to see the deer and it's the mounts that connect the optics to the rifle. Without these two, you're at nothing. You can get you can get away with the cheap things, but with the cheaper brands. But when it comes to last light and that big stag pops out and you can't see him because of cheap optics, you'll understand why. Don't skimp on the optics, save an extra few quid and purchase once, buy once and cry once. So guys, hopefully you've liked this. Again, give it a thumbs up, give it a like um, and share with your friends. Hope to catch you on the next one. I'll talk to you soon.